Hello and welcome back to Malaria Part 2. In Part 1, we have already studied what is malaria and what does it do in our body and thereby we try to understand the treatment and prevention strategies. In Part 2, we will be seeing the actual drug regimens to control chloroquine sensitive malaria. But before doing that, let us first revise, briefly recap what we did in Part 1 by seeing the answers to the quiz posed at the end of part one. So the first question was regarding clinical cure, which is the phase of the malarial parasite in the human body, which corresponds to the clinical attack. And we've seen that it is the rupture of RBCs to release merozoids into the bloodstream, which corresponds to the clinical symptoms of rigors and fever, fever with chills. And therefore, to control clinical attack, we need an erythrocytic schizonticide, which can kill the erythrocytic schizons inside the RBCs. To block transmission, we obviously need to kill the gametes, and a separate gametocidal agent is required for Plasmodium falciparum, as the erythrocytic schizonticides used for clinical cure are not able to kill the gametes or gametocytes in Plasmodium falciparum. For Yvax and Ovale, we saw that hypnozoids, which stay back in the liver, can decide to enter the bloodstream at a later stage and give rise to relapse, and therefore, to completely eradicate the malarial parasite, Yvax or Ovale, from the body. To kill these hypnozoids, we need tissue schizonticide. The fourth strategy we discussed was prevention of malaria in an individual going to an endemic region and we discussed why causal prophylaxis using a tissue schizonticide throughout the stay is not used because the tissue schizonticide is not safe for prolonged use. So the strategy which is used for protecting this traveler is suppressive prophylaxis by repeated use of erythrocytic schizonticides throughout the stay and little earlier and little later as well which as we will see subsequently. So let us now go on to the actual treatment regimen for clinical cure. So clinical cure needs a rapidly acting erythrocytic schizonticide and the first erythrocytic schizonticide introduced in management of malaria was quinine but because of its toxic potential it is no more the drug of choice for management of malaria. However it does remain important for managing chloroquine resistant malaria. So chloroquine which was introduced around World War II has reigned the arena of clinical cure of malaria for more than 50 years and remains the drug of choice for chloroquine sensitive malaria. But now chloroquine resistant falciparum is quite rampant even in India. Though earlier restricted to Northeast, it has spread elsewhere as well and we are also occasionally getting chloroquine resistant YVAX and so the need of drugs which would be effective erythrocytic schizonticides effective in chloroquine resistant malaria and we have sulfur pyrimethamine a combination of sulfur doxin pyrimethamine which works as a single dose effectively for controlling the clinical attack of chloroquine resistant malaria Next is mefloquine, and the major breakthrough considered is the discovery of artemisinins, nins, which are effective in chloroquine resistant as well as sensitive malarias, and they are commonly used, we will see in the next part, commonly used as combination treatment with sulfur pyrimethamine, mefloquine, or lumefantry. So let us go on to see the clinical cure, the strategy, and the regimens used for clinical cure of chloroquine sensitive YVAX malaria. The drug as we discussed is chloroquine phosphate. Chloroquine available as chloroquine phosphate. So each tablet of chloroquine phosphate contains 250 milligrams of chloroquine phosphate. And the weight is contributed by chloroquine base as well as the phosphate group. And so each tablet contains 150 milligrams of chloroquine base. This breakup is important to understand because 
the dosage of chloroquine in terms of milligrams or many other anti-malarials is often expressed as milligrams of base. Since chloroquine is available in only this strain, that one tablet contains 250 milligrams of chloroquine phosphate or 150 milligrams of base, you can also remember the dosage regimen in terms of tablets. So after confirming chloroquine, uh, malarial infection by peripheral blood smear, we would start chloroquine with four tablets given immediately, two tablets given six hours later on the same day, two more tablets are given on second day and two more on third day. So it is a total 10 tablets course of chloroquine for chloroquine sensitive vivax. This is a 10 tablets course for an adult getting chloroquine sensitive vivax malaria. So in terms of milligrams of base, what is the total dose? If one tablet contains 150 milligrams of base, four tablets would contain 600, two tablets would contain 300 milligrams base. And so the total adult dose comes to 1500 milligrams of base, chloroquine base, total dose of chloroquine in adults. The dose in children also differs according to age. And to make it easy to remember, we can remember that for infants, the dose is 110, that is 150. For children between one to five years, it is double of this, that is 300 milligrams of base, total dose. And for five to 10 years, old children, it is 600 milligrams total, 600 milligrams base of chloroquine as a total dose. This we're talking about chloroquine sensitive YVAX. For chloroquine resistant YVAX as well as any falciparum, it is ACT regimen which we'll be discussing in the next part. Next treatment strategy we discussed was that for YVAX and ovale, it is a relapsing malaria due to hypnozoids which decide to come into the bloodstream at a later time. And to avoid this relapse, for total eradication of malarial parasite from the body for Vivax and ovale, we need a tissue schizonticide for this radical cure. And the tissue schizonticide that we, that's used today is primaquin. But this primaquin is an oxidative drug with a potential to cause hemolysis. It needs to be given for radical cure in the dose of 15 milligrams per day for two weeks, that is 14 days. But even this dose of primaquin, 15 milligrams per day, can cause hemolysis in G6PD deficient individuals. And therefore, this radical cure strategy is not implemented. In these G6PD deficient individuals, we need to assess, assess their G6PD status before initiating the primaquin schedule for radical cure. Similarly, because fetus is deficient in G6PD, glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme, radical cure is also not implemented in pregnancy. Another place where we do not implement radical cure or what is the place of this radical cure is if the patient who has experienced Vivax malaria is residing in a non-endemic area, then there's a point in giving him 14 days of primaquin treatment for radical cure. If the person is residing in endemic area, where the very next day he could get a fresh dose of infection from a mosquito bite, there is no point in subjecting this patient to 14 days treatment with this potentially toxic drug primaquin. So radical cure is used only if the patient is residing in non-endemic areas. It is not used if the patient is residing in endemic areas. Another important role of primaquin is for blocking transmission of falciparum because primaquin itself is the gametocidal agent used for this purpose. And for this gametocidal action, it needs to be given in just 45 milligrams single dose is effective as gametocidal. So primaquin works as tissue schizonticide to avoid relapse, 
to achieve radical cure from vivax or ovale in an individual staying in non endemic area after assessing the g6pd status and of course it is not used in pregnancy it also works as a single dose treatment for gametocidal effect to block transmission of falciparum tafinoquin has is a newer agent which works in the single dose of 800 mg for radical cure but it is not yet included in the official recommended regimens in india coming to causal prophylaxis we have seen that primaquin again being the tissue season decide we do not use causal prophylaxis strategy to protect a traveler going to an endemic area what is used is suppressive prophylaxis where erythrocytic schizonticides are used repeatedly at a designated frequency to kill the erythrocytic schizons within the rbcs so that even if the patient even if the traveler has got infection of malaria through a mosquito bite he will not manifest with the clinical symptoms of malaria of course vector control in general or protecting that individual from mosquito bite remains the basic preventive strategy the drugs used the erythrocytic schizonticides used today are mefloquin which needs to be given on a weekly basis and doxycycline which has to be given on a daily basis earlier when the chloroquine resistant was not rampant chloroquine has also been used as 300 mg base once a week for chemoprophylaxis of malaria this weekly dose has been used for almost 3 years at a stretch without any adverse effect but because of widespread of resistant malaria today in india we do not use chloroquine anymore even sulfa pyrimethamine resistance has been seen in plasmodium falciparum in the northeast and so sulfa pyrimethamine is also not today used as suppressive prophylactic agent so drugs used are mefloquine 250 mg per week it has to be begun one week before going to the endemic area continued throughout the stay and for 10 weeks after returning from the endemic area doxycycline has to be given 100 mg per day it can be started just the day before going to the endemic area continued throughout the stay and for 4 weeks after return from endemic area so doxycycline has the limitation of having to be taken on a daily basis but it has the advantage that it needs to be started just one day before going to the endemic area so any unscheduled unplanned meeting we can take the cover of doxycycline whereas it's a pre planned meeting you have one week before going there to start the treatment we can use mefloquine however again doxycycline being a tetracycline is not to be used in children and pregnant ladies going on to that completes the regimens with doses but before we stop this session let's again emphasize the important points that you studied and so please try to remember and write down the strategies the drug regimen for clinical cure the drug regimen to block transmission the drug regimen to prevent malaria in a traveler going to the endemic area so wish you a happy learning thank you